All right, Coach. Uh, obviously, very exciting week. I mean, it seems like we were just at spring spring ball, and then all of a sudden, boom, here we are. I mean, it's it's week one. I yeah. mean, how are you feeling? Well, feeling good. I think we're at the point where, you know, obviously camps felt really long. You know, we get here in mid-August, and, and uh, we've been going against each other uh, like crazy, and and, uh, and it's just like, hey, we're everybody's wanting to play an opponent. And so, you know, although the summer just flies by and, and um, you know, like you said, it's all of a sudden I can't believe we're heading out Friday already. But, but you know, we've had a good fall camp, but I think uh, you can tell uh, our practices have been good. But, you know, the last two days it's just uh, – it's a case where guys are – they're uh, – you know, they're ready to play somebody. Exciting, too, to go to FCS Eastern Washington, obviously, yeah. on Saturday. Good trip for the guys, obviously, um, getting a chance to go, you know, on the charter plane and get to go down there and with the red turf and everything. It's pretty exciting, obviously, to be able to play an FCS school and uh, get that first one under your belt. Yeah, when we when the change happened to the GLVC and we were we had four open dates, you know, a lot of our uh, kids, a lot of our leadership um, upperclassmen to be um, kind of came to me and just said, you know, Coach, we – We'd really like an opportunity to play, you know, an FCS game. I mean, when our old conference, we could never do things like that. And and I have done that in the past as a, a coach going up and playing a, a level higher than us and, and had a lot of fun doing it. Um, kids had great experiences. And so, you know, we thought, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of options out there, you know, because it was kind of late when we moved over to the GLVC. So finding games was tough. And so, you know, obviously to be able to take on a, a great – football program played in the national championship last year at fcs uh level and and uh so it's a good test for us but um you know the kids are excited with the move to the glvc you know you get a bunch of new teams you have to recruit you've probably seen some in the past obviously but being the miaa for your first two years and now kind of making that transition to a new conference tell me about how your coaching staff's kind of dealing with that well, you know, it, it was a lot of film watching this summer. To, you know, what we wanted to do is just kind of get a gauge of every team we're playing. You know, you kind of, you know, we, uh, it's been years. I mean, early in my career, I uh, played against William Jewell and, and um, you know, I played McKendry once in the playoffs at Sioux Falls. And, you know, I mean, you have uh, some some familiarity with them, but that's been years ago. So, you know, it was, it was kind of fun to, to watch uh, new teams, um, you know, get an idea of what, what, pro, what their uh, – what their programs like, kind of what their themes are, kind of what their uh, character is a little bit, and so it was a lot of watching film, and and of course uh, spent a lot of the time uh, trying to break down Eastern Washington with the summer, but we just got little little quick looks at all the teams that we'll be playing. You kind of mentioned to me too, though it doesn't really matter what conference you're in you're all going for the end goal to be able to make yeah. the playoffs and the national championship obviously so I mean in the long run it's the same thing as the MIAA you just you want a chance to get to the national championship yeah I think at first you know we I remember when we first talked about this you know when the GLVC move happened you know I think uh, just the first knee jack knee jerk reaction was was uh you know oh no we're leaving a great conference and why are we leaving and it, it was just kind of that the fear of change I think our, it all subsided quickly when you know we our theme was to our players was look guys we don't, we don't really care what conference we're in I mean our goal is to get to the final 28 teams uh, we want it, we want a new season in the playoffs and and have a chance to go get our goal and I think the kids really kind of saw that I think from a coaching standpoint yeah at first you know we're in a very we recruit in a very heavy area that's been uh, a lot of in MIAA uh, uh, prospects and 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 the conference is so thick throughout the Midwest that you know the the fear was maybe would would kids entertain uh, Lindenwood over you know teams that are in the MIAA. I think the fact that you know the the class that we signed um, and just really kind of saw that that really wasn't a factor. I mean, I I was I was pleasantly surprised at how many kids just really didn't care about that. I think that eased our coaches' minds. Um, it, I think playing. Uh, we've got some FCS teams on our schedule now for the next few years, uh, to where every class can go go play in environments like that. And mm -hmm. I think that's helped in recruiting, especially we're we're always recruiting those borderline FCS players anyway, to, right. to know that they you know they get to experience that as well. So um, it's all gone really well. Yeah, it's exciting time. Obviously, you guys moving conferences, but also getting to play the FCS schools. You got some returners on offense. Let's talk about that first. Kay Brister, obviously redshirt sophomore quarterback, having a big year last year. He stepped up big. I mean, you told me about it preseason, said this kid's going to be special. Yep. And when you, you hear that from a coach, you're kind of like, okay, it, it, it's special, but like, what, in two years? And, right. and right away, he was an impact. So he's a big player. Eric Hinneman comes back, obviously, All-American all across the board everywhere last year. Uh, Peyton Rose, Nash Sutherland, other guys in the offensive line. You got a pretty good set coming back on offense. Yeah, we do. And, and you know, it starts at the quarterback position. 
is I think that's why, you know, you have your, your captains and your leaders on both sides of the ball. But, you know, we all know that the quarterback is is the overall captain of mm-hmm. your team, and that position is so crucial from a leadership position. And that's what, you know, you and I talked about way back when he was uh, declared the starter as a redshirt freshman. What makes him special is just the, the leadership that he possesses. I mean, he's he's a guy that it leads uh, completely by credibility. Um, the kids see that. Um, you know, they voted him a team captain again this year. Uh, just like last year, and so you know that, and and Eric kinneman has been a you know a, just a great um, leader as well. You know, sometimes you don't see kids that come in, maybe from a junior college. You know, you know the stigma out there sometimes is well, junior college kids can't be this, they can't be that. Right. I've never bought into that. I think it's just like high school. It's 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 who you recruit, whether it's from high school, whether it's junior college, and to see the impact he's made from a leadership standpoint. Um, but you know that there is a lot of experience, and especially we were very young in the receiver. Receiver core last year, last year Najee uh, Jackson coming back now. We, when he moved to receiver, he was still kind of getting his feet wet a little bit at that position. He's had a great camp, mm-hmm. you know, to see Peyton and Najee come back um, now with a year under his belt at wide receiver is you know kind of flying under the radar a little bit because a lot of you know uh, made a bunch of good plays for us last year. But I think he's kind of taken that role now, and he's really he, he never he was never a case where he didn't buy in. It was right. just a lot about just learning it and. Uh, and so uh, I'm excited about Najee this year at that position. He became a big target too, and ever Eric would get doubled a lot last season. Absolutely. He was a, he was a big time guy throughout the throughout the inside. So um, obviously the offense is very exciting. Defense as well. You lose a Jonathan Harris, which is always tough. But you got Uchenna Eguwan who coming back on the defensive line. You got a young secondary coming back. A couple injuries here and there, but overall pretty pretty set I guess yeah and then you got Drew Sears at linebacker I mean who are some guys that uh, not only returning that you're expected to have another big year but also guys that maybe are, are new to the team that are gonna make big impacts well guys that made a big impact in our secondary right off the bat Keith Beverly for example he's a transfer from uh, Missouri Southern when they when they uh, uh, changed coaches down there there was uh, you know the decisions made by their program to, to really cut a lot of players and mm-hmm. kind of they wanted to kind of start fresh so uh, you know Keith was a kid that contacted us um, you know, what was unique is when we played them, he, he really uh, – he said Lennon literally stuck out to him, just how, how we played and our culture. And and so we added – Keith came in, um, it really just wanted an opportunity, ended up kind of stealing a starting role at the corner spot in spring. Uh, just an incredible kid. I, I always kind of thought, man, if they're getting rid of kids like Keith, man, they, they better have some special dudes <laughs> coming in because that, uh, that kid's special. So. Yeah. Um, you know, so he, for example, you know, because we've had you know great competition, you know, uh, with Jordan Perry and Keith, like you know, those are, those guys have been battling back and forth all through spring and fall camp. But you know, JP brings us uh, so much. Uh, uh, you know, he he can he can do a lot of things too. He can you know. Um, he can play on both sides. You know, if we needed, got in a pinch, and needed to go play some safety, he's able to do that. So Jordan, you know, I'm excited about Jordan Perry as well, uh, returning starter for us. You know, and of course uh, Ricky McCoy, who's been uh, been playing since a true freshman here, going into his last season, is very seasoned, mm-hmm. and another versatile guy that can do a lot of things for us in a nickel spot as a corner can go play safety. So that's I think what brings us a lot of comfort defensively is we we got a lot more depth this year that maybe last year in some areas we didn't have as much depth. We really addressed the defensive line in the offseason and depth at linebacker. So we were able to get a lot of kids in um, in the spring mm-hmm. uh, for spring ball um, in our linebacker core and in our in our defensive tackles. Um, so we're deeper there. And so, um, you know, last year we were kind of, by the end of the year, we were just kind of hanging on. Uh, we didn't have a lot of depth. So, you know, one injury was could be a major factor. Obviously, uh, with the move to the GLVC, the preseason rankings come out, and yeah. they say that Lindenwood's number two. I mm-hmm. mean, it's pretty cool to have yeah. a team move from MIAA. Obviously, they know you're a force to be reckoned with. How do you, I guess, tell your players that, hey, we're number two, it's awesome to see and everything and get that hype, but let's focus on us and not let it get to us. Really. Yeah, you know, TG, I don't know. I, to be honest with you, I don't think I even spoke to it. I mean, I think uh, when it come out and then we, you know, we had our – we're getting into fall camp. I never even brought it up. I'm thinking our coaching staff. We looked at it very. I think number one, very honored that that the, a lot of teams this conference picked us to be number two in the league without really even playing against us. I think you know it speaks a lot to uh, you know maybe the, whatever the reputation of the MIAA or that. But we we know that 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 hasn't proven anything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, right now they, there's a the the reigning conference champion in Indianapolis is a very very good football team. Um, Show 
showed that by beating Fort Hay State, um, you know, out of the MIAA in the playoffs. And so, and then, you know, I, I just am too familiar with some of the coaches at McKendree and, and, and uh, Truman State. And, you know, I, I can go down the list here, S&T with t- Coach Drury there that I've known forever, who's a very good football coach, uh, first year as a head coach. So, man, you know, we don't take anything. I, and, and I think we're, you, you've heard us always say we're kind of a one and zero mentality, focus on the present this week, all mm-hmm. those types of things. So not letting the cart get out of the head of horse at all. You talked to me about when you came here your first year, the hardest thing when switching schools, you know, and become, taking your coaching staff to another school is to kind of put your – uh, I guess, thought process in with this team and let them know exactly what you want and have the chemistry together. Yeah. How have you seen since year one, now going into year three, that chemistry between guys, some new and some that have been here for all those years, kind of coming together and realizing, hey, we can do this and kind of working as a team? Yeah, it was a, a work in progress. You know, I think, you know, there was some uh, there was some hard times through that because I think there was some, uh, you know, I think there was a lot of excitement at the start just because there's a change and, and they did some homework on these coaches that are coming in and, and some of the winning that's happened. And so there was some excitement. But that's really after a month, some of that stuff wears out. And that's mm-hmm. where you really got it that separates kind of uh, oil from the water a little bit. It's just, you know, what uh, uh, who's going to put that commitment in. And so it, you know, there was some tough calls. You know, we had a, we had a uh, move away from some that just hadn't bought in. But, you know, now, you know, going through year two, and obviously that population of kids on our team currently from our first team we took in, I, th- I believe is right around eight kids, mm-hmm. uh, are the guys that uh, have completely bought in. They're, they're teaching the new culture to the incoming freshmen. Um, you know, they, they realize uh, what our expectations are here, that we're, we're preaching a, a, a type of culture that's not really prevalent in a lot of places. It's unique. It's different. Um, and the kids recognize that, hey, you know, it's, it's, uh, there, there's something to this. And I think so um, I, I've been really pleased with the transition. Obviously, you know, we knew that there was going to be some growing pains. We're never satisfied with the win-loss record. Sure. I think, you know, that was one of the disappointments last year. I felt like uh, uh, we, we – uh, our kids played well enough to have a better record than they did. I think there were some things we needed to help them with from a coaching staff. We've learned from those things because I think one thing we did see from last year's team, and you called every game, you saw it, is that we had a fight there. I think our first year the fight would go away when adversity hit. Right. Uh, we had fight last year. Uh, it took teams all the way to the end, won one and over, uh, lost one in overtime, come from behind. It was fun to see, you know, you, the record was the same, but man, you could just see it was a different team. And they kind of cared a little bit after the games on a loss. It took a little longer to get over. Um, that got, that showed some things. Well, and to me, when you, when you say how they've kind of transitioned from that of being hungrier each year you've been here so far. And then also the fact that, like you said, they kind of have a bad taste in their mouth from the records they've had the past two years. It, it, it kind of makes it into a mixture that could be very dangerous for other teams in the uh, GLVC. Sure. I mean, I think they, you know, I think the best thing that happened is that that last win of the year to, to have to end on all the kids that were coming back, obviously to honor the seniors with that win at the very last game, but all the, everybody coming back to say, hey, this is what this feels like. Hey, we can keep grinding and fighting back, and this is what it feels like to win a big game like that. I think it, it brought a lot of enthusiasm into our off season in our spring. Um, but our off season workouts guys were highly motivated because I think they said, "Hey, we can, you know, we, we, this this tastes sweet. Let's let's uh, let's keep this going." I know Lions fans are obviously excited, getting pumped up for the first game against Eastern Washington. By the way, you can listen to it on eighty nine one thewood dot com or on your FM dial eighty nine point one FM. Um, I'll be on the call along with Dominic Hosher and Jack Leach, uh, Coach. Going into Eastern Washington, let's talk about this team. Yeah. Division one FCS school, second place last year, national championship runner up. Obviously, a team to be forced to be reckoned with. Um, first week, they had a little bit of trouble with Washington, obviously, 13th mm-hmm. ranked in FCS. Tell me about what you think about, or I should say FBS. Tell me what you think about Eastern Washington, what you've seen from them. Well, I've had some familiarity with them just from, you know, being being uh, just being familiar with the Big Sky Conference. And, and, you know, I've coached at Northern Colorado. I've got friends all in that league. And so, um, you know, th- yeah, it, we've had some people, you know, uh, 
it's mixed bag. You know, some people wondering why would we do this, um, things like that. I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm all about, I'm kind of a, you live life once, uh, kind of a guy, yeah. you know, enjoy life. I think, uh, enjoy this, this program. And our, our kids have been excited about going on, into a bigger stage. Um, the fact that they played in the national championship last year against North coast state, I think is even a better thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like to, to be the best. You got to play the best. You got to see, I want our kids to experience, uh, what, what an environment's like. Um, I want them to have the belief that they can go in and take play by play, uh, do your job and just kind of uh, let the chips fall where they may. We're not going into this with the mindset of, uh, hey, let's just go give our best showing. I want us to go in with the mindset that, hey, we can beat anybody we play if we just do our job and do those things. But I think, you know, number one, the, the excitement, like I said, we we, we want to operate our program like a Division One program and the way we travel – uh, in the way we conduct ourselves uh, in and out of our program. And part of that is having experience like this. And the kids are really excited about it. But uh, I'm highly impressed with this team. I was watched them a lot last year when we fi- realized that we're playing them. And, and uh, Coach Bet, very, very good coach. I mean, these you can see how well they're coached. You know, offensively, they're, they're very explosive. Mm-hmm. They, they like explosive plays. That's what they relied on a lot last year. Got an incredible quarterback. Um, got, got their receivers catch balls. They block downfield. Uh, they got good running backs. Offensive lines played 250 games together as an offensive line this, that, that's coming back, so we know their season there. And then defensively, again, just the solid, sound team. You know, they don't. You know, I don't like trickery and stuff. I like just. I respect teams that are just line up sound and they play good football. So, yeah, we've we've uh, we're going into a very good uh, uh, program uh, to play against. But uh, I want our kids to recognize that. You know, that we're we're uh, we believe that we're getting there too. And so go go. Sort it out. So when you go over there and you tell them, you know, in the locker room, um, I'm sure there's going to be nerves. Obviously, you you put in the fact that it's a new season. It's game one. It's FCS D1 school. I mean, what do you tell those guys to kind of calm them down and say, just go play football? Well, you know, uh, one of the things we talked about is uh, I I told them the other day, we're not giving any David and Goliath speeches. I think um, a good one of my former coaches that's at Texas State, uh, Tremaine Jackson, we had a great talk the other night because he said, you know, we looking back, they went and played Texas A&M. Um, they're, they just got hired, uh, Coach uh, Spav there, turning over around the program. He said it was interesting. All the intentions were there, but it was a little bit like we're trying to uh, – we're trying to pump these guys up to go in and do a miracle. And it almost can have an adverse effect. Like, man, we must not have a chance in this. They right. keep preaching. And I think we've it's confirming to me that we've kind of taken this approach like, hey, you know, you, you have a guy that you have to block. You have a guy you have to tackle. You have to, you, you know, you, there's a hole you got to run through and do that play by play. Uh, but he said something interesting. He said, you know, one of my players said, you know, coach, these guys are all the same age as we are. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think sometimes you look at, um, you know, a team, a bigger team that you're playing, and it's all of a sudden you think that they're now they're 22 to 26 years old. No, these are 18 to 22-year-old kids. I talked to our team yesterday about that. That's all I've really said is just as a reminder, and I'll tell them again today, is is just those reminders of, of kind of – you have to respect who you're playing, but you fear nobody. Right. And and I reminded him, hey, these are 18 and 22 year old kids just like you are. Yeah. And uh, you know I've uh, you know I look at uh, Drew Sears and I look at Ooch and and I look at uh, Eric Hinneman and I look at Cade Brister and I look at Nash Sutherland, and I start counting the people on our team and realize that. The, and the list keeps going on. There's a bunch of kids on our teams that could be playing FCS football. Right. We've done a great job of recruiting FCS players. And so, you know, it's it's not that different. You know, it's not that different. I think the other challenge to that point is is what we'll speak to today a lot is is understanding you do have to understand the environment that you're going into. The one thing you can't get off guard by is, you know, we've been in practice. We've kind of thrown some noise out on the sound system just to get it loud so our guys can communicate through it. But it's not going to be close to that. It's, it is going to be loud. Uh, uh, there, you walk through a, um, you walk through their uh, tailgate uh, period, uh, uh, a section on purpose. They're going to know your name. They're going to know your girlfriend's name. They're going to know your mom's name. Right. They're not going to say flattering stuff. <laughs> Are you mentally focused to go through and not and keep out the outside noise? And then obviously that first wave of the first couple drives, you know, where it's just adjusting to speed because not just because it's Eastern Washington, but first games are about we're going up against each other a lot. We're going against scout teams. The speed's going to be different. That's right. whether you're playing a D2 opponent or an FCS opponent. So weathering those little storms at the beginning and then let all the emotions kind of subside and then we're, we're in a football game. So you've kind of 
pointed at it, but I guess more in depth on what are some goals you have, I mean, for week one? Obviously, for them to calm down and just play football, but what are some actual things on the field you'd like them to, like them to do? Well, you know, the, the obvious word would be execute our assignments, you know. But, you know, what I what I want us to do, anytime you're playing a um, – we have the same talk against Northwest Missouri. You know, a lot of the – a lot of the games when you're trying to beat somebody that's beat you a lot, and I think one of our challenges when we were here is that nine times out of ten, the opponents that go play a Northwest Missouri in the past, the game's over before they get there because they've been so ingrained in, well, we always lose to this team, we're supposed to lose, they, they got a great home record. And so the psychological component is, well, this, you know, we must not be able to win. Right. And then, you know, but the teams that go in, um, I think about South Dakota State uh, almost beating Minnesota that night because I know that program really well. I know their head coach. I know their coaches, and I know how they coach. And those guys went in confidently, saying, "I don't care if it's Minnesota. We're a very good team here, and we're going to play." And mm-hmm. they almost, you know, they were just one mistake away from from uh, one fumble away, and they they're going to beat Minnesota. Uh, just wrong timing. So we kind of follow that model of our expectations is go out and do your job. Don't play intimidated, and and don't. We haven't even used the word, you know, we have nothing to lose because that has that sign that 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 has that uh, message of of uh, uh, insecurity or right. or almost not confident. I, you know, when you hear that expression, it's like, hey, we have nothing to lose, so let's just let's like, no, we, let's go yeah, execute and plan to win a game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As far as offense goes, I mean, you guys are going to run your offense, you know, how it's how it's planned out. As far as defense, you know, you mentioned the weapons that they have, mm-hmm. running running quarterback and Barrier. Obviously, they do a lot of wingback set formations, a lot of option, but they can also throw the ball. What do you go about defending this team? Well, you know, um, my history as a defensive coordinator and being um, – I've always learned, you know, um, you teams that are, that are big play offenses – they want it. That's what their expectation is. So if you eliminate big plays, and you kind of concede the fact that it's hard to, you're not going to shut down a high explosive offense. And so you know, it's understanding if if you know we talk to our players a lot. Again, not just if it's Eastern Washington, anybody. If there's a faster receiver than you are that you see on film, you got to position yourself in a different position. That then you know we don't say, hey, I'm gonna. You know, it's knowing your opponent and understanding the things that you can do well, and that's what you do. And that comes to the respect aspect, if you know. And so, you know, our goal in our game plan is to eliminate big plays. Right. You know, they are going to get their five and ten yard chunks. Their quarterback's very good. He's a scram. He can scramble, and he's a good runner. Um, and and realize that we already realized they're going to get their yards. Um, teams that want to the score fastly and quickly get frustrated when that doesn't happen. Uh, you know, their kids are used to it. And so, you know, if it's one of these things where you know there's going to be some movement of a football. Um, but the big, quick chunks and of, of yards and, and scoring plays that that cover you know uh, a lot of yards and quick scores that can be demoralizing. So it's it's uh, uh, respecting your opponent, kind of knowing what they do well, and, and trying to contain that and and uh, live for another series of downs until they make the mistakes. Lions open up their season against Eastern Washington Eagles uh, this Saturday, 3 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Pacific on, uh, of course, September 7th. And again, if you want to hear the game, I'll be on the broadcast, 891thewood.com or 89.1 FM on your dial with uh, myself, Jack Leach, and Dominic Hosher. Coach, can't thank you enough. Last question. You, you ever think you'd be paying, playing on red turf? You ever seen that? I know no. you've seen it, but I mean, I don't yeah, know if you've... Yeah, you know, I think that was part of the fun. You know, it's kind of like the Inferno. They've done a great job out there kind of uh, marketing that, and, yeah. and uh, our kids thought it was kind of cool. And uh, I've never different. played on a... on a. You know, I've had friends that played at Boise all the time, just mm-hmm. talked about how, you know, it's kind of annoying a little bit. But uh, <laughs> I, again, these are just things we don't even speak to, because right, I think right, if right. you don't even build it up, it's not that big a deal. For sure. Coach, congratulations yeah. on uh, good off season obviously yeah. and uh, congrats on everything you've done so far in the program and good luck this season thanks tj i'm excited about another year with you man absolutely well fun. i mean it's great we to got see a lot, lot to come more <laughs> coaches shows coming everything i'm excited about that. absolutely thanks coach yeah thank you